Hello, I'm Heather, and today we're gonna do part two of our Bowser Bracers build. This time we're gonna do the painting, which is a little bit more fun, but it takes a lot longer. So in part one, we took six millimeter foam and we turned it into a bracer for our arms, or a van brace. Um, we cut out six millimeter foam and we put detailing on it and we heat shaped it with a heat gun. So in part two, we get to do some painting. The ingredients we have today are the acrylic paint and FlexBond. FlexBond is what I use as a primer. Anytime you paint a surface, you have to put a first layer on it to prime it. FlexBond is really cool because, like the name suggests, it's actually kind of flexible so that the paint doesn't crack when you're done painting it, which is really useful in cosplay because you end up bumping things or bending things a lot. I mix this with a little bit of water and use at least two coats. Sometimes you can use even more. It just depends on how much abuse your piece is gonna take. So the kind of paint technique that I'm gonna show you today is gonna be sort of small detailing. It's um, gonna add a little bit of gradient color and it's gonna add like a depth of color and a little bit of texture because these are sort of mimicking Bowser's turtle-like thing or whatever he's got going on. We use two different shades of green. If it's a bigger piece, I would recommend mixing some shades and doing even more shades so you get an even deeper kind of color. Just regular old acrylic paints. And I'm gonna use super tiny brushes because it's a super tiny piece. And then of course we use the white paint for the edging. If you're, using a, if you're making a bigger piece, then you're gonna use stuff like this and maybe even tissues or random balled up pieces of paper to kind of get the effect you're looking for. All right. On to the painting. Now here's where the magic happens. I'm taking my darker color of green and I'm starting my first layer, kind of dotting it to give it a little bit of texture. And as you can already start to see, it's gonna take a whole lot of coats to make this very bright green. Notice how I'm making sure that I go around the little hexagons because I want those little hexagon shapes, the detail that we cut in, I want those to be pretty standout-ish. So we were speeding this up so you can see that I'm even on my second layer now. It's kind of an interesting way to paint. You keep on dotting wherever you see that it's dried pretty quick and you just keep adding to it and adding to it until you start to get a thicker color, more opaque color. So after we've done one or two layers, or maybe three, I don't know, I lost count, of the darker green, we're gonna start to add the lighter green now. We're gonna start it in the middle and then kinda let it spread out towards the edges. The reason that we started out in the middle is because theoretically that's where the light's gonna hit it, so that's where the color should actually be the lightest. Also notice how the brush strokes are looking a little bit feathered towards the edges where your brush is kind of like sticking out and spreading out, that's another part of the whole texture thing. So now it looks more and more real and more three-dimensional, less flat. Now we're using the white paint to start our white edging. This is gonna take a whole bunch of coats because we're putting white over black. If you notice, I changed my brushes out. I'm trying to use a brush here. It's the same width as the actual edging itself. And again, this is gonna take a whole lot of coats. And for the first couple of layers, you don't have to worry necessarily about brush strokes and direction. But as you start putting on your top layers, you wanna be more cautious of making sure that your brush strokes are in the right direction. After most of our stuff is dry, then kind of at the end, I'm gonna fill in some of the spots with the darker color, making less of a color gradient, but maybe more of a tortoise shell or Bowser shell. Mm. 
Now that we've finished with the painting, you have to seal the paint, so put on a top coat. I don't have that with me to show you because I used it all up and had to throw it away, but I just use an acrylic top coat that you can get at pretty much any craft store or Home Depot or something, just some sort of Rust-Oleum clear top coat. And that's really helpful for when you bump into things. Um, the last thing I did was I put Velcro and straps on here so that they could be attached to my arm. You can use lots of different, there's lots of different ways to attach stuff to your arm, but I like Velcro. And now it can be Bowser. Thank you for watching Library Con Demand.